What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ruben and Jesse podcast. I am Jesse. And I'm Ruben. And we are back here again with another brotherly love cast. I just made that up, but that's what we'll call it. We're, we're the should, brotherly we love should say cast. that all the time now. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the brotherly love cast um, and uh, where Ruben and I sit together or stand together depending on how we're feeling <laughs> and shoot the shit about life lessons and things we're learning along our journey outside of our regular programming with guests which you can always go and check out um but uh, you're here you're hanging with us so enjoy ruben what are we talking about today man man i think Oh, the big thing that's been coming up, at least for both of us, as we just spoke about was, was leadership, not only in terms of like outside leadership, but also that inner, inner leadership for yourself. Um, and it kind of came to me and I was like, Jesse, I think this is what I want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Um, because, uh, in my day job, I tell, I've talked about this in the past, but I work with about 40 students every six months. I train them for about five and a half to six months on uh, do this learning and development phase that we have. Uh, and you think it's all about life lessons, like really the soft skills that you need to bring into the workforce, but also like, because it's me, I bring in that like, hey, you need this not only at work, but I think it can help you also in your life. And I try to blend the two together when I'm doing the trainings that I do. Um, and like I was telling you, I was, I was like, a week ago, I was feeling a little unappreciated throughout the day. I was like, I put in all this work. I, I try really hard because I do care where these people go. I feel like I'm, I'm responsible for the next steps in their life, right? Um, because they're spending so much time with, with me and my team. It's not only me. Don't think I'm taking this selfishly. Like I have an amazing team that works with me. Um, but I'm the one that kind of makes those, those last decisions. And for my birthday, just to give you some context, Karina gave me a book. And if you're watching the YouTube, it's like a leather bound book um, with a bunch of words from people like Jesse and, and Valentina and my mom and like all the people closest to me, my closest friends, my closest family members. And it's all about like things. I don't know the question she asked you guys, but I know it's something around the line. Like, what do you appreciate about Ruben or some essence of that? And, um, you know, that, that when I saw that, like, obviously reading through all of your notes, I was very, like, emotional in a good way. I felt very, like, oh, like, I'm doing something right. And, um, you know, like, I was feeling, like, unappreciated. So I did pull the book out that day to kind of read through a few things again. And then um, literally, like, three days after that, we had our final meeting with our, with our class that's currently graduating. And one of my manager, my manager brought up a, a virtual yearbook and my name was on that as well as all the other 50 people that are part of this group. And um, towards the end, I noticed like, you know, I was going, I was shifting through everybody's, everyone has like 14, 20 quotes, they're all like kind of condensed and it looks beautiful to see all those beautiful words that people were saying. Now I go to my name and I noticed there's tons of quotes uh from people like staff members students that i was working with um and you know there were things like ruben the fiercest fearless leader of our lc and lc to call learning community um you know I've, I've read that several times people were like thank you so much for helping for pushing me when i didn't want to push myself because i'm really hard on the kid on these students but it's all on purpose um and all these are his words. And I just felt like, oh, like, you know, those days that you feel unappreciated is like, hey, someone's always watching, even if they don't say it. Um, and I like something that you mentioned earlier about like, you're not really a leader unless someone else tells you you lead. You can't just be like, hey, I'm a leader. Um, mm -hmm. People have to say that <laughs> about you. So yeah, I definitely want to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, you definitely can't. Um... Uh, I heard it first on a Lewis House podcast. I don't remember the gentleman's name who was interviewing, but it was a Navy SEAL. And um, yeah, it was such a it was such a great perspective to have, which is like like calling yourself a leader is like calling yourself handsome. Like you can't call yourself handsome; someone else has to say that to you, right? And and being a leader is one of those few things in life where 
you can't self-proclaim that, you know, you can self-proclaim as a health coach, you can self-proclaim as a, you know, intuition spirit guide or whatever the fuck you, you want to call yourself, you know what I mean? Or a baller or a badass bitch, like whatever you feel like uh, you want to identify yourself with. But leader is one of those few things that um, other people have to um, have to, to call upon you and, and, and say, and even, even if you're in quote unquote, a leadership role, like look at our, look at the state of our country right now. And, mm. and the government we're in, like we have a bunch of people in leadership roles, but a lot of us do not identify them as leaders um, based on their actions. And so, um, yeah, a hundred percent, man. And, and that must, uh, you know, that must've been wonderful to, to, to get that feeling, but, uh, well, not, but, and looking back now, when you were feeling unappreciated in the future, how do you feel like your perspective has shifted, you know, moving forward in those? So when you do f- maybe feel those times where you, you're not getting uh, the, the external validation that you want, how do you, how is your perspective shifted after getting those notes? Yeah, I think it's just uh, that idea of just, knowing that people are always watching it's like when you read about you know parenting books like i've read parenting books just mm-hmm. because I, I i plan to be the best father on this face of this planet <laughs> <laughs> um so i, I remember reading and they and even last night when i was reading the book that were i think you finished it it didn't start mm-hmm. with you um mm-hmm. and they talk about how like children are listening even in the womb mm-hmm. like that there's this energy that's happening. I think I also saw this in Missing Links, um, a Gaia TV show that you told me about. Um, and how we're like, con- like when you're a kid, your brain is literally a sponge and just like grabbing everything, feelings, uh, body language, like emotions, the way you're, you, you pitch your voice when you're talking to the baby. Like it's, in, it's insane, like all these things um, that I, I was learning about. And they were saying how like, it's i forgot where i was going so i kind of lost it but (laughs) (laughs) um i think someone's always paying attention that's kind of the idea here and if i plan to be a a great father one day or anything it's just like oh i need to feel like i am a parent in a sense Mm -hmm. and then everything that i do in my day job someone's watching like Mm -hmm. someone's looking at what i do the mistakes i make how i uh, recover from those mistakes um, and how I show up every single day. And students know me as that like person that's going to hold them accountable. Like some of them have told me that they've been scared to go with me. And so they'll go to another staff member and that staff member will be like, well, you need to ask Ruben about it. And they're just like, fuck, <laughs> you know, they don't want to. But I think that's the idea I came up with in my personal coaching business is like stay kind and dangerous. And I feel like, yes, you kind of, and I'm freezing. Um, Yes, you kind of want to be that person that, yeah, people might be afraid of, but there's in the long run, they're going to be like, man, I'm so grateful you did that for me, even though at the time I hated you for it. Um, And I'm willing to take that hit. I mean, I've built my internal structures and my internal, um, my internal, I call it my fortitude. I just made a video on this coming out in two weeks, y'all, about like that balance and why you need fortitude in it. Uh, But yeah. I was freezing. Sorry, folks, if I hurt, if I sound like crazy. So <laughs> what do you have to say about that, Jesse? Cut. I'll edit that out. How bad was it? Am I still good? No? Want to hit that pause button? All right. Sorry, y'all technical difficulties. But jumping right back in. There we go. So, there we go. So I was saying about uh, the students and how some of them have told me, like, I, I've been, I was afraid to approach you. And I, and I take that idea of my coaching business or the tagline I'm working on, which is like, stay kind and dangerous, because I think there's a, there's an aspect of me that's really kind. And there's a lot of staff members that are super nice. And I'm like, oh, I'm the person that needs to hold people accountable to what they say they're going to do. And I always tell them, like, one of my biggest things is, like, accountability. And one of my favorite agreements of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. If you break mm. your word, like, that's not right. Because people are always counting on you when you go into the workforce or mm-hmm. even in your life. 
And I'm like, how can I be that person that people can count on? And I was, that's definitely coming from a person who, you know, I used to make plans with people and because I didn't want to tell them that I couldn't go or I didn't want to go, I just wouldn't say anything, for instance. Mm-hmm. And then they'd be looking for Damn. me. Yo, you came out? And I'd just be like, no, something came up. And I lie. Like, something came mm-hmm. up, you know? Um, and I hated that about myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, not trying, but I am showing up in that way where it's just like, if I can't do that, I'm going to tell you. Like, I can't mm-hmm. do that because of this. Um, yeah. And they watching, like everyone's watching, just like the child is is soaking in everything as a baby. I think that that's also happening um, when I go to work or like every time I show up with a video, every time we show up with a podcast, whoever these folks that are, you, the listener, like you're taking this in and it's helping you however which way, because we see the numbers, it's helping you in your life. And I think the way we show up is really supporting those other people that are yeah. showing. Just like we listen to the people we listen to, and we show up the way we do. So it's kind of like always going down, um, yeah, the, the ladder. So absolutely, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I agree. That, that's been one of the. I think. I think over the past few years, what has started me in my like growth as a person is this idea of accountability and showing up, you know, showing up, you know, one for myself um, and how that contributes to my other relationships. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I totally agree with that in the sense that I think my own, what's accelerated my own growth uh, or at least held me accountable to my own growth the last few years is this idea of uh, showing up when no one's watching. Mm. Cause I definitely think for a lot, for, for a really long time, you know, I've been into personal development since I was like 16 years old, or at least had had a, a language for it since I was like 16 years old. And Oh, for so many years, had I, been someone who preached about this thing and that thing and the third thing but behind closed doors i wasn't doing any of those things or i was constantly falling short of myself and what's interesting is the more the more i work on holding myself accountable the less i talk like the less (laughs) the less i preach the less i share because i think there's a there's a level of like when you actually know what it takes to do some to like actually live by those standards it's so much work (laughs) and it requires so much effort. It requires so much just like mental fortitude, at least once you're, when you're in the process of, uh, of establishing it, because it's really hard to look back, let's say even a year ago um, or a year and a half ago uh, or two years ago, when I was kind of going through that process of really establishing the way I live my life now. And now it's like on, it's on the momentum is pretty strong, right? So my, uh, there is still challenges from time to time. There are some, you know, very stressful moments in attempting to be on top of all the things all the time, but there's enough inertia there where it's comfortable. Um, and so for anyone who's listening, who doesn't feel like they're in that place yet, you know, know that there, you do get to a place where you are running on inertia in a positive direction and you know doing the things that work and not to say that there are still things that you are going to fall short on because i sure shit fall short on shit all the time like every day you know what i mean um but i think it's the uh one of the biggest changes in my relationships with other people was when i started to really uh look inward and and account for what i was doing in my day-to-day life and that, you know, where that, when that hit the hardest was, you know, I've brought this up before, but when my binge eating got to like its peak and I was just out of control, that was, that was a dark time because I loved and still love sharing ideas and ways of living with other people. And I was even, I was already pursuing coaching at that time. Um, but it got to the point where the way I was living my life was so, out of alignment with those principles that I had no, I felt as if I had no right to, to bring that to other people. 
And the fact of the matter is, is like, whether you're someone who, who recognize, recognizes that in yourself, or you're someone who is, for lack of better terms, like bullshitting, meaning that you're someone who is still trying to show up every day and be a leader. And it, again, it, let's say you're in a leadership role at work or, or in your life, whatever it is, at home with your family. People, people see right through it, right? They may not know exactly what's going on. They may not know all the details of how you're, um, sh- uh, of, of what's going on behind the scenes. But there is a vast, um, like, uh, and especially if, if they have any sort of awareness, they're going to see right through your BS. Even if you're still smiling, you got, you look good, whatever it is. Um, if you're not doing all the practices and all the things you're sharing to others, uh, it's just not going to come, come through as well. Um, and I think that's a, a big reason why I, the more I do hold myself accountable to living that way all the time, the less I speak is because the less I need to speak. You know what I mean? Like just by showing up in my day-to-day life and, and, uh, and without saying a word, you know, people will come to me for certain things or ask me certain questions that maybe they never asked me before or never even thought to ask me, but they started to notice that, hey, like Jesse's, the way Jesse's showing up is different. The way he's living his life is different than what I remember he was living his life of, or like the way he's um, talking about certain things, not even, it could be anything, right? It could be talking, it could be, I could be talking about um, a walk I had but it, it, how you do anything is how you do everything. So the way I communicate about this walk that I just had is going to be different than if I was in a different place in life. So it's, and the way I walk, the way I maneuver, the way I dress, the way everything is dependent on your day-to-day habits. And so when we talk about leadership and holding yourself accountable, if you're someone who wants to be a leader, right? If you're someone who wants to share with, with the world and, feel comfortable about, um, uh, feel valued in that type of position. Um, you don't need to strive for it. You know, you don't need to, uh, when I say strive for it, I mean, you, you don't need to convince anyone that you're a leader. Um, you just need to convince yourself, you know, you need to know you. And that's the thing. The only person you can lie to is the person in the mirror, right? So um, a, a lot of the time people are striving to be something that they're really, that they're not, and they know they're not. And that's why it's just not happening for them. Um, and so whether it's a leader or whatever, whatever it is, let's say you want to be a world-class athlete. If you're not doing the things, you know, 24 seven that you need to do to become a world-class athlete, then either change your expectation or look yourself in the mirror and be like, Hey, what do I need to do to actually achieve this? And I think, you know, Ruben, you, you know, you can t- talk on this. I think, one of the hardest things with facing that reality is content is social media is um, YouTube, for example, because I know for a lot of years, I was following guys on YouTube who or watching, you know, inspiring documentaries and all you see is the end product, right? All you see is the end result of years. I'm talking sometimes even multiple decades of work leading up to this one moment in their life. And you're like, all I want is just this one moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? A hundred percent. I think, um, funny enough, I was watching, me, me and Karina, we have HBO Max and you know how they're doing new movies every, every month. Mm. So this month they came out with a movie called The Little Things. It's with Denzel Washington, Jared Leto, Rami mm. Malek. This, it's a pretty all-star cast, like amazing cast. It was an okay movie. But um, I Googled it because I was like, is this a true story? Because it's like a crime thriller about a serial Mm -hmm. killer. And um, it wasn't. Apparently, the writer had this script drafted on his desk since 1990. Damn. And, you know, that's 30 years ago. And And I noticed, like, when I was watching the movie, I was like, this is so familiar. Like, I feel like I watched this kind of movie before. It was very similar to Seven, which is with uh, Mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. And I was like, why is this so familiar? So I had to Google it. And lo and behold, the guy who wrote Seven 
wrote this, mm -hmm. but he wrote seven after he wrote this. And this wow. movie literally just came out, um, you know, 30 years later, just to see wow. like, What's in the box? Right? Like, <laughs> what's in the box? What's they in had the a box in this movie, too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so, why is this so familiar? And it's, you know, it's the same thing, except he wrote this before he wrote Seven. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's wild how sometimes these things happen to us where we, we kind of put it to the side and they come up later. But that only shows through when we're accountable to ourselves. And maybe you might put something to the side now and it'll come out and flourish later or blossom at some yeah. other time. Um, and that requires us to think we can get into the idea of like leadership in yourself. Cause regardless of like, you know, if you're a woman who doesn't want to be a leader because it's too much work and you'd rather just be with a man who's going to take care of most of the things and you're just, you know, you take care of your home and maybe you have a side business or whatever the case may be. And you just want to chill there's still a sense of leadership that needs to happen in your life because you need to hold, you have responsibility. If you have a kid, like that's your responsibility. You have to be a leader to that kid. Um, if you have animals, you're kind of a leader to that animal. I mean, a dog looks up to you, right? Cause you're the mm -hmm. alpha dog in terms of the pack sense. And that's how they view you, right? So regardless of where you are, like when people are like, I don't want to be a leader, I kind of just want to like kind of hang out in the background and like well good luck because that won't last long <laughs> right no, Depend especially no. as you get older and more and more responsibility you start showing up and if you get old enough and you're still living with your parents at 45 you'll kind of feel horrible about yourself so it's mm -hmm. like well you need to yeah. there's something that needs to happen yeah. here the call to leadership is going to happen regardless at some exactly. point in your life at some point in your life you're going to have to even if it's with your own parents you know what i mean mm -hmm. at some point you're going to have to um, you're going to be pressed with an opportunity to take control of a situation. And that could be with that. Could, again, that could just be with yourself, whether it's a health crisis, whether it's family, whether it's home or business, whatever it is, there's going to be a point where uh, you're going to be called to take ownership of something. <laughs> And the level of your preparation is what's going to allow your level of success in that, you know, in that position. And yeah, man, you know, a hundred percent, I agree with your, with what you're saying as far as like leadership over yourself, because um, when you consider what you are, like if, if I didn't learn anything from this book is like, we are just, we are literally at the base level, even as adults, all we are is accumulation of our of who our family was you mm -hmm. know what i mean everything that's come before in our environment right our family and our environment we're an accumulation of that and the leadership comes is when you start directing that energy somewhere else when you start directing who you are and what you are towards a new version and that's where you see leaps and bounds in people you know from where their parents came from or or what their environment was it's like yeah you have to become a leader over yourself and um under and you know you have compassion and empathy for who you are at a base level um but this you know how you again how you do anything is how you do everything and so um if you feel like if you feel like uh well i don't have anyone to lead or i don't have a, i'm not lead, i'm not a lead on any project or um I don't have a family or I don't have like any, I don't have any external thing to lead <laughs> fucking start with you. You know what I mean? You're the first person to lead, you know, take account of all the things that you're not upholding yourself to. You're not, you know, um, doing the best with and, and, and start with and go from there. Even with your communication with other people, you're always communicating with others. Right. So uh, that's just one small example of like, will take charge of a communication lead, you know, how can you do better in, in your relationships? How can you do better in the way you interact with other people, the way you take feedback, the way you give feedback, you know, the, the possibilities are endless when you start um, looking at that. And I think, and you know, this is something that Jocko wrote an entire book about uh, extreme ownership, which is like when you do start taking leadership over yourself, the thing that's, you know, parallel with leadership is responsibility. 
and um, and in some ways, I think it's a, another word. I think those those two words can mean the same thing, which is like for you to lead yourself, you have to take responsibility over yourself. You know, you have to take responsibility for everything that's going on in your life, right? And that shit sucks. I uh, trust me, I know, man. Like, you know, I've been I've been in the pressure cooker uh, quite a few times. You know, right now even still in the pressure cooker. And it's hard to be like, this is my fault. (laughs) You know, it's really hard. But if I don't do that, then I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay where I am. And a big reason, you know, we'll, we'll find the time to talk about this book. It didn't start with you because at least for me, I've had some really amazing breakthroughs. And I think for yourself, at the very least, you've had some really great connections and understandings about who you are. And at least, maybe more questions than answers right now, if nothing else, you know, but if I didn't look at my life and go, Hey, I'm fucking up in this, in this area, or, Hey, I'm still, I'm still the one who's, who's, who's the reason for this not being the way I want it to be. If I didn't choose to have that awareness, then I wouldn't, I would never had the breakthroughs that I had. Um, And I think that's also another important point. It's like, when you take responsibility the moment you take responsibility over your life, it, it's, it's not that, well, now you're, you're going to become suffocated by the burden because you're already, you're, you're already suffocated by the burden. It's there whether you choose to own it or not. But once you do choose to own it, well, now you get to, you get to explore the reasons why and explore how to get out of it. But as long as you continue to stay victimized, as long as you you blame it on shortcomings or you blame it on other people or, 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 or things that didn't or did or didn't happen. You're never going to see how you can change your reality. And that's the same thing with leading a team or leading other people. It's like, you know, once you start acknowledging the potential within yourself, you can, you can acknowledge the potential in other people and you can call other people forward. Like, I think I would think the, a big reason why you hold your students so accountable and why you push them is because you see the potential in them. And the reason you see the potential in them is because you see the potential within yourself. You identify with where they are in their life at their age. You look back at where you were in your life at that age. And you, and then you look at all the lessons you've learned along the way. And you're probably like, damn, like this kid is dope. He just needs to understand X, Y, Z. And once he does, like, he's going to be able to push forward because that's what you did. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's not that you took a bunch of leadership courses. I mean, you, you I mean, you both have done leadership trainings together, but it's not that like you're constantly studying leadership or reading, you know, all sorts of leadership books all the time. It's just the way you live your life. That's the way you show up for the people around you, you know? Yeah. And that's why I love like a big, a big part of like social media is I'm able to share that like, Hey, mm-hmm. yes, I ran four miles today. Yes. I ran five miles today. Yes. I ran this, um, well, I, I haven't been that great in showing my, my strength and conditioning work or, or even the food that we eat. You know, mm-hmm. you can follow Karina for that. She takes <laughs> a picture of all our food. <laughs> um, so she's the foodie in the house. I never have my phone when it comes to like eating. You know, I try to mm-hmm. avoid being on my phone so I don't get that idea to be like, oh, let me take a picture of what I'm mm-hmm. going to eat today. Um, but I think it, it it's another tool that holds us accountable. Not only mm-hmm. that, but the body changes so fast when it comes to like nutrition, for instance, and that you can see exactly like, oh, you ate, you know, we had pizza the other week um, and you saw it immediately. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you, mean, you mm-hmm. see it like your, your belly, you see it like in your arms, you, you, you feel it, you you know, the inflammation starts hitting. So your face a little mm-hmm. puffs up a little bit. Like you're like, holy crap. Like if it wasn't because of all our training and, and what we know, like other people don't see that shit. They just mm-hmm. go about their day and they're like, oh, I have these random pains in my body or like, why mm-hmm. am I becoming pimply face? They don't think about that. They're not like, because I had that pizza the other day. They're just like, oh, this is just my regular life. And I'm always like, that's crazy. I want to be optimal. I want to feel fantastic all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, when I have those, obviously we talked about like, how do we recover from that? But that's a great way to hold yourself accountable but also having friends, man, like I always say, like, um, even when I talk to Karina, I'm like, I'm so grateful to have a friend like Jesse, 
because we can't hold each other accountable mm-hmm. like that, because we can, we have these conversations every week, not only on the podcast, but, you know, just over the phone mm-hmm. where we're just like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working on, you know, and, and you'll call me out on my shit and be like, yo, bro, what, what's going on here? What's going on there? And mm-hmm. I'll call you out on your shit. And I think that's, a, that's like fucking necessary because yeah, we can be yeah, on our own, but at the same time, we need those people in our life that's going to push the button when it needs to be pushed. Like, yeah. Hey, you're not showing up. Like you said you were, you're not, you know, and, I, and when you were talking about earlier, like the BS, like when you're being, when you're talking BS, like sometimes you'll get really good at it and you start mm-hmm. meeting other BSers yeah. and you guys all just bullshitting each other. And yeah, there's like some bullshit circle. It's just a bullshit, just a bullshit circle. circle jerk. Like everyone's <laughs> jerking off each other's bullshit. Yep. Exactly. exactly. And then just, and there's no, there's nothing happening. There's no forward momentum. Yes. None of that because everyone's yes. just like, yes, you're doing fantastic. I freaking <laughs> hate that man. And, yeah. it, and it happens occasionally, whether that's my day job, I think it probably even happens in your job. It happens in everyone's job mm-hmm. where, you know, people yeah. want to give feedback and they're just like, being all airy fairy about it i'm just like nah i take the ideas from ray dalio in principles where he's like no if we have someone with a presentation we'll have the whole leadership team come in and destruct the shit out of it and i'm like yes like i want to make that person cry but okay and, <laughs> I, I like to get like pretty out there but um one thing i noticed and i read this in in a book on for men so you know mm. take this with a grain of salt um if you're a woman because it may not affect you the same way. But in, in this book, To Be a Man, he talks, he, the whole book was about shame. So it was about the negative aspects of shame and then mm. also the positive aspects of shame. Because mm-hmm. no feeling that we feel is good or, or bad. It's just, it's necessary. There's a reason mm-hmm. why we have that feeling. And mm-hmm. he talks about shame and how shame can actually be used as a great tool mm-hmm. when you're trying to get someone to do something, right? Like if, we were in a men's group of 15 guys and you're the only one who didn't do the specific, you know, homework we have for the, for the, for the week, you're going to get called out in the next meeting. Like, yeah. you know, you know, Ruben, why didn't you do this? You're the only one that didn't do this. What's the excuse. And when you're in the middle of 14 other men looking at you being like, why didn't you do this? We all got this done. Maybe it was, I don't know. You had to hike up a 2000 meter mountain or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you're going to feel it. And mm-hmm. guess what? You're never going to let that happen again. Like yeah. miss that because you were yeah. shamed in front of all these people. And I think that can yeah. be a good tool for it. And if you're a good leader, you know how to use it to your advantage for you, the people who are working for you. Yeah. And you could, I mean, you can always take that too far and yeah, of course. Uh, you know, that's not, you know, look at Scientology, for example, is a perfect example is a perfect one where, you know, you, sh- you manipulate others through shame. Um, and that's why, you know, it's important to be a well-rounded leader and be holistic in your leadership, meaning that, like, it's not that, you're, you, it's not that you want this person to feel shame. But the, the fact is that if you do feel shame, you're only feeling it because you care. You know what I mean? Like, if you didn't give a fuck about this task, right, then you, then you wouldn't feel shame. If someone came up to me the other day and was like, well, why didn't you... I don't know. I don't know. It's a good example. It's like, you know, why didn't you get this car fixed? You know, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, I don't give a fuck about that. And so I'm not going to feel shame for not doing that. Or um, if I missed, if I missed the mark on a specific project um, that was sort of a low hanging project and didn't move the needle on things, well, it's like, I'm not going to feel shame for that because uh, it's just not, it's just not necessary, right? It's not, it's not the bulk of my responsibility or it's not like the responsibility that really matters the most. Um, and I think that's, and I think that's a great meter, a, a great measurement stick for yourself. It's like, where in your life do you feel shame and not shame because it's, you're right. It is a tricky word to use, but not shame because you're like, comparing yourself to other people all the time and, and are constantly um, feel shame for who you are as a person, but where in your life are, do you feel shame because you're not doing what you know you're capable of, right? When it comes to just things that are outside of your control, there are legitimate things that are outside of your control and 
if they are outside of your control well well shame's not going to support you there um inspiration and and you know wit and ability to think outside the box will but where in your life are you missing the mark all the time where you know that you could thrive right because you're going to feel bad that you missed that that homework because you know you could have gotten it done right it, you know that you could have made that happen if you had fucking crazy shit come up in your life and all, and it was a whirlwind and then you didn't get the homework done. Well, yeah, you shouldn't feel shame for that because mm -hmm. life is life and things really happen. And you wouldn't feel shame. You wouldn't feel shame in the moment because you go, Hey, X, Y, Z happened and I couldn't get it done. And I own that, but this is the reality. But if you were slack, if you, if it was only because you were slacking or only because you were lazy or only, you know, whatever, fill in the blank there, then yeah, you should feel shame because you didn't, you didn't uphold yourself to who you can be. Mm. And you didn't uphold yourself to your brothers. And I think what you were saying earlier about, you know, people who bullshit themselves will, will get in a circle with other people who bullshit themselves. I, I was, I was going to say uh, something along the same lines. It was like, which is like, if you, if you don't have people in your life who, who are holding you accountable, that is a reflection of yourself. Right. If you're not holding yourself accountable, if you're not, you know, uh, and this goes all the way down to quantum physics and frequencies. Like if you're not operating at a certain level for yourself, you're not going to resonate with people who are doing the same. Because guess what? Those people, they're going to see right through your bullshit. They're going to see. It. And we, we know these people. We have friends like this who are friends. They're great people. They're lovely human beings. But uh and you guys can talk about healthy eating. You can talk about fitness, but you know what they're, you can tell without even having to ask them, you know, uh, to look at their schedule. You know, just by the way they speak and the way they communicate that yeah, in their own lives, they're not holding themselves to the truths that they're talking with you. And so, you know, at some point you're just like, well, I'm going to have to distance myself from this person because we're just not, we're not operating at the same, at the same frequency. Yeah, and that can be a hard pill to swallow, especially if it's like, I don't know, someone that you grew up with from childhood. Um, and I think mm -hmm. those are hard. And I remember learning from Ty Lopez, whether you like him or not, but when he first came out and I took his 67 steps mm -hmm. and he was talking about one of them was like, you want to have friends that are like on each level, like mm -hmm. in balance. 33%. Like the 33% rule, I think it was called. And you want to have, their, you know, some of them more successful than you, people that are kind of on your level and then people um, not under you, but who are just not on the level that you're on, whether financially, you know, your mindset, whatever the case may be, because you get to learn from those people too. You get to be like, I don't want to be that or I don't want to do that. And as much as you try to help them and support them, they may not listen to you and that's okay. Like they're yeah. probably afraid of something. There's some, there's some like hidden uh, um, trauma. trauma that's there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, like it's it's crazy. Like I, reading this book, really, and I'm sure, and I'm sure you know this more because I think you've read more books on the, like trauma than me. But like books like the Body Keeps the Score, this one, like it's really like holy crap. I think I mean everyone has trauma. Like everybody, <laughs> everyone, everyone. everyone. And it's like, if you don't accept the fact that you do have it, like, what are you missing out on? Like to mm -hmm. live your life fully, like Absolutely. to live a fully integrated and optimal hum human life. And, that, and not only for yourself, but to give it to your next generation, your kin, yeah. your, 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 your kids. Um, and it, it, it blows my mind when people want to just hide from it. Like, you know, and I have people in my life that do that. Do that. They just hide from me. You'll ask them questions and they'll kind of like go around it, you know, like they'll try to like sneakily, yeah. like change the subject in some way. And I can see it now. Like, that's why I love the work that we do because we're able to like, I see through your bullshit. Like, yeah. like it's a clear glass, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I gotta look at you. And at the, you know, at the same time, I mean, you already alluded to this. It's like, what you, yeah, you, you still have compassion for that person you still love your love for that person doesn't have to diminish mm -hmm. um and this is a big lesson that i've been learning especially after reading that book like that book took my compassion to a whole nother level because it's true it's like you don't know what's happened in someone's life and shit you don't even know what's happened in their grandparents life that could be affecting them you know um and 
all of that to say is people most of the time are running on whatever survival skills they have or whatever survival you know situation they think they're in and they're going to hang on to uh, the lowest hanging fruit all the time uh, to get them through that scenario and so if um, if you're listening to this uh, and and any of these things that we're talking about you know the, the bullshit that we see through people if you see that within yourself you know don't you don't need to beat yourself up or think that we're just like uh, crushing you it's more of the sense of like hey we all have this you know all of us Ruben, Ruben has this I have this we have our bullshit we know when other people see our bullshit I know when someone sees my bullshit all the time with, with my girlfriend with with my friends with my family with my co-workers I know when people see that I'm being full of shit and it hurts like hell um uh and so you still continue to have compassion for those people in your life that are still stuck in, in loops and cycles of BS, um, just like you are. Uh, but the work is, is to start unraveling those cycles, to start unraveling those things and start, and start leading your psyche and your physiology towards you know, a, a stronger frequency and a, and a stronger foundation to stand on. And then you will find those people. If you haven't already, you will find those people that um, you will resonate with. And, and also, here's, a, here's a, a great tip, is like, if there are people in your life that, you know, assuming, you know, under the assumption that you're someone who, well, I think actually, never mind. I think you can do this at any level, which is if there's someone in your life who, when you talk to them or see them, you get nervous around them or like your students, right? Like if your students get nervous around you or nervous to, 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 um, to say the truth to you, if there's someone in your life who you get nervous, you know, about saying the truth to, meaning like showing, like, like connecting with them, hanging out with them because you feel as if they're operating at a different level than you and meaning a higher level than you then by all means, reach out to that person. By all means, hit them up right now. If there's someone in your life who's really staying on top of things and you're fortunate enough to have someone who you can connect with like that, reach out to them right away. Because just by the act of being around that person, you're going to change. Because you'll see how they hold themselves accountable and you'll hold yourself accountable. Um, And if if you have hangups around, like, I'm not, you know, what do you mean? I don't need someone else to to show me how to live my life or I don't need someone else to, to, to lead me towards a better way, then you're still stuck in your own traps and that's okay. You know, Hey, we're here to support you. You're still stuck in your own bullshit. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is like, once you do actually start leading yourself, you realize how important it is to have other leaders in your life. And you realize how vital it is to have other friends who can challenge you and who are performing better than you in their areas. I love that I have friends all around me that are better than me at everything, every single thing. There's not one thing in my life that I don't know someone who's better at me than, you know, because that shit pushes me like crazy to get better at, at that thing. You know what I mean? Like, for example, like, like I remember I have, I was having trouble uh, building a consistent reading practice. You know what I mean? Like my, I was kind of like slacking or saying I was going to find time here or there. And I remember, I, I remember when I first, I think the second or third time I started hanging out with our boy Nikita, who will be on the show soon. So watch out for that. Um, but I remember I was hanging out with him and he's like, yeah, bro, I read a book a week. I was like, you read a book a week? How do you read a book a week? And he's like, I do, I do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes a night, every day. And I was like, fuck. And so I, and then I, I immediately picked up that practice. You know what I mean? I immediately was like, all right, I'm going to start reading 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. And I started fucking crushing books. And that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have someone in my life who I was like, oh, shit, he's doing that. He's able to make that happen. Well, fuck, I can make that happen. You know, we're, you know, we're at the same level. We're belly to belly, eye to eye. And, and you know, if he can do it, but I can do it. And so, yeah, get uncomfortable. Have friends that make you uncomfortable. Um, and so you can get after it more, you know. Yeah, and that's why I like <clears throat> this kind of like um, practice that we have going, like you and I, for instance, um is the the videos and blogs right Mm -hmm. like i feel like 
I've done that for years, like on and off. Like mm -hmm. I'll start a, a video practice and then I'll make in videos weekly and yada, yada. I'll do it for weeks at a time. And then like something changes in life. There's a transition, whatever the case may be. And that stop. Um, same thing with a blog. I had a blog in the past. Um, I was doing it, doing it, doing it. Transition happened. Stop. Like, <laughs> like mm -hmm. so many different things and now that i you know like not only you but i also see nikita like i connect with nikita all the time on like instagram and shit and i'm always like damn these guys are are, are like pumping it out they're just mm -hmm. like boom 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 like, i'm just like okay i gotta do the same yeah. and so there's this healthy like like even though we don't yeah. say it to each other we're oh just yeah like, i've been peeping your shit all the time bro <laughs> i was like oh this motherfucker got some new content i bet <laughs> Exactly. No, still, it motivates the fuck out of me it makes me like want to go and, and 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 write even when i don't want to or shoot when i don't want to because it's like fuck man like if he's doing it i i gotta do it you know right and i think if you if we have that momentum you have other people doing like similar things it just keeps you going because you're just like if i stop who am i and that's where the shame comes in like that good part of shame where mm -hmm. you're like oh if i stop like I'm not like holding to my standards of what I put on myself. Like, this is what I want to do. And you guys are just pushing me as much as I don't want to, you know, yes. For instance, yesterday I was just like, I have to shoot two videos because I want to get ahead of the game. I was like, Oh, fuck, I don't feel like doing this. So I literally like took a, took a walk, a few laps around <laughs> my block in the sun, get my heart rate going. Cause I was like a little bit tired from work. Um, I ate a healthy meal, a healthy lunch. I was like, all right, I just took my stuff out. I still didn't feel like doing that. I just took my stuff out, set up everything. Because mm -hmm. for me, it's the setup. The setup is just annoying because mm -hmm. it takes me a while to set it up. But once I had it, I was just like, all right, I'm good. I got it. And I shot my two videos. And I'm going to edit them today. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, it's not, you know, and it's funny because like when I went on YouTube yesterday, um, and I saw your video pop up. Mm -hmm. I was just like, look at that. Like, you know, I see Jesse's <laughs> video. I just shot two videos. I'm like, all right, I'm good. Like I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> I seen Nikita's video. I'm like, motherfuckers, you know, like yeah. it's like these guys are just, you know, killing it with, with pumping out content and really showing their, their gifts. Like you guys mm -hmm. have gifts. Um, you know, you're not the only two. There's those other people in my life who are just killing it in different areas, right? They yeah, may not be absolutely. making content, but you know, even though, uh, you know, Martin, a friend of mine who helped me build the website, you know, even though I've been like, he's not really doing much like that dude, he does a lot. Like when it comes to like online stuff, whether that's building websites for people and doing some marketing stuff for people, he's doing all that. And I'm always just like, damn, he's every time I talk to him, I'm like, oh, you're killing it in other ways that I don't mm -hmm. normally see. We don't see yeah. it, but it's like so much background work. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, like, okay. Like I have friends that are just like, they're doing it. They're mm -hmm. consistently like putting it out there. And I think it just yeah. helps all of us, actually, all of us. Yeah, um. <laughs> absolutely. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure Nikita looks at our shit and is like, yo, all right, let's fucking go, you know? Um, <laughs> I never asked him about it, but I would assume, because why not? You know, you see your friends doing things and, and you, you do it too. Um, and I think you brought something up that I, I think is a great place to, to round this out with, which is that only matters everything we're talking about only matters if it's shit you care about right yep. like if it's if if you don't give a fuck about reading books then you don't have to if your friend tells you he's pumping out a book a week um if you don't care about that then you don't have to now go and pump out a book a week because that's not that's not where your head's at that's not where your heart's at you know so at the end of the day it's like you know pay attention to if you don't want to shoot content you know, if that's not where your heart is, then you don't have to now go ahead and pump out a bunch of content just because your friends are doing it because we're doing it. You have to uh, look at the things that people are doing in their lives that you want to do, that you actually, you know, your soul wants to, to make happen and, and you, know, you know, attach yourself to that wave. Um, and so, you know, just being mindful of the places in your life where you can take ownership um, and and lead because the the truth of it is is that anything with substance and any true amount of leadership can only really be built upon you know a long-term plan a long-term game you know changes change it change happens really fucking slow because anything i learned <laughs> in my life up to this point 
is that change is a slow process. Um, even, at, even if you think that, well, sometimes, you know, people get lucky or people, opportunities come and it, yes, it does. But for you to be in a position for that opportunity to come, that part takes time to develop. Um, and, uh, and what, I forgot that quote, but it's something along the lines of like, uh, when, prepar when preparation meets luck, I forgot what it's called. Uh, whatever. When opportunity meets luck, it's some. I forget. I, I think yes. I know what you're Someone about. could hold up. We are on our computers, <laughs> guys. I'm gonna tell you when preparation meets opportunity. Oh, I think it's when preparation meets opportunity. People will call it luck. Yes. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, a, it's a, there's a similar quote about the bus, like that 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 bus that you take only when you're prepared and you're standing in the right place yes. at the right time, that's luck. But it's like, yes. actually, I've, I, I worked hard to get to that bus. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, it is a quote by Seneca, uh, hey. a Roman philosopher. He said, luck, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Damn. And, you know, that's what, so again, change is a slow process. So commit to the things that you really care about and that you actually want to see happen in yourself. And understand that it's a slow process. And the beauty of that is, is that when you look at whatever it is that you want to accomplish, whether it's a sport, whether it's a skill, and you go, wow, but that's going to take a lot of time. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. Anything you care about is going to take a lot of time. There's not one thing that's not going to take a lot. Even if you don't care about it, even if you don't give a fuck about it, it's going to take a lot of time So to get good at. So if you, if you want to get good at something, get good at something you care about because that shit's going to take a long time either. And if you do, and if you get good at something you don't care about, that shit's also going to take a long time. And that's a trap people can fall in, you know, not to divert too hard. And I've seen this within myself, which is like, you could have already built a skill in something over the last few years that maybe you didn't care about, or maybe you cared about it at a certain point and because it served you at that time and maybe it doesn't serve you now or it's not where you want to be moving forward um so but don't be afraid to switch gears you know and shift into something else just because you found success in this one area or you're you know you're crushing it in this one thing it's like you know that's great you've built momentum there but understand if there's anything if you want to learn new things in your life or if you want to put yourself in a different position in your life you're gonna have to go through that same process you went into when you started learning that thing whatever that thing is so realize that that thing isn't easy to you. It's easy now just because you've built momentum over the years. And now if you're switching gears into a different part of your life that you want to develop, well, you're going to have to go through that same process. So, and so just don't be afraid of acknowledging that, acknowledging that you want to move somewhere different and be realistic about, hey, this is going to take time and allow it to take time because what else are you going to do? You know, like life's just going to keep moving forward you know, you might as well, you might as well swallow the fact that this is going to take time and get after it. Yep. And I mean, I'll close out with this. I think it's a quote by Tony Robbins. And it's like, we, mm -hmm. under, we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in a decade. It's so true because mm -hmm. of what you, like everything you were just saying, like evolution takes time. And I, I, I know I made a video called, I don't, I don't like the word change. I call it evolution. And I use mm. like Pokemon examples because mm. like, you know, when I was playing Pokemon, it took just to give that example, it took a while before my Pokemon would evolve into a stronger version. Like I had to really put them, you know, my little Charmander to the test, mm -hmm. you know, I had to put him to the test and constantly have him fight and put him through all these challenges in a sense in a video using the video game just to, for him to reach a certain level where he was like, okay, I'm ready to evolve to this next stage. Yes. Um, and you have to be okay with that. And, you know, and just like be like, what's my 10 year goal? And am I doing every, you know, I tell my students this all the time. What are you doing today that your 10 year self from now will be thankful that you did, right? Like you're not thinking for just today, you're thinking for that man or woman in the future because you want to be like, oh, because I did this, now I know why I'm here. You know, I think about that all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm always grateful that I went to China and dealt with the deepest, darkest parts of myself when I was out there. Um, 
every day. Like, I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful for that. Because if it wasn't for that, I would not have the friends that I have. I would not be in the, you know, the space that I'm in and, 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 and all these goals I have accomplished in my life that I set out when I was like 18, 19. Like, these are the things I'm going to do. I didn't hit all of them, but I got some of them. And I'm like, holy <laughs> crap. Like, that took, you know, like I put that into the universe, if you want to take it meta. And, you know, the universe was like, oh, you listened, like you listened mm -hmm. to your soul, you listened to your path. And this is where you are, because you yeah. listened to all the opportunities that were whispering in your ear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just wanted to do wanna... anything else, Jesse, or we're good. I think we're good, brother. I think we set all the dopeness on this episode. Um, yeah, so you know, we could we we can close out, guys, gals, anyone, everyone who is listening. Thanks for so much for tuning in for another episode of the Brotherly Love Cast. <laughs> That's what we're calling it now. Um, <laughs> where Ruben and I just get together, shoot the shit about a topic and take it where it goes. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, as always, you know, give some love. Uh, leave us a review leave us some Please. stars share it with a friend if you found it impactful that stuff really makes a difference um oh yeah uh, get ready for february because we have got some guests for you what some big ones coming up ruben oh yes do we not do we not we've got some special guests coming up in this month so it's gonna be an exciting month for the show um and uh, as always, you know, if you're interested in coaching, if you're interested in working with either Ruben or myself, you know, you can check out our websites down below, book a session. Um, we are here to support you. We are here to give you the tools and the skills to uplevel your life, whether in health and in, in well-being, in fitness, in uh, your relationships, whatever it is, we are here to rock and roll with you. Uh, whenever you want so you can go ahead and check that out in the in the description as well Ruben any last words you said it all my brother all I want to say is for all y'all like I say stay kind stay dangerous we love y'all thank you peace <laughs>